thank you very much for registering today and thank you very much for joining us online for today's webinar. Um, today's webinar is entitled IPC Conformal Solder Joint Inspection by Means of 3D, 3D X-ray Inspection. So we're going to be talking about the basics of X-ray inspection, uh, automated X-ray inspection and automated optical inspection will be compared. Um, I just before we before I introduce our speaker, I just want to give you a couple of housekeeping uh, comments. First of all, the PowerPoint presentation will be available, so we'll be able to provide you with that. We're also recording the webinar, so an on-demand down uh, an on-demand version will be on EMS now sometime in the next 24 to 48 hours, and. Um, the webinar itself will be a presentation followed by a question and answer session. If you look in your control panel, you should see a box where you can type in questions. Do do that as you go, as you're watching the slides, keep those questions coming in. And then when we get to the end of Daniel's presentation, I will then um, offer him the questions and we'll discuss those. So our speaker today is Daniel Roberts of Gopal Electronics. Gopal Electronics are the sponsor of today's webinar. We thank them very much for that. Um, Daniel is the technical sales engineer and is based in the UK. Um, so without further ado, I will hand you over to Daniel. Daniel, thanks very much. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for your time and good morning if you are uh, in the USA. Um, good afternoon if you're in the UK um, and in Europe. Um, let me first start off with, uh, this is a, a fairly short presentation um, and we will be discussing uh, 3D X-ray, um, AXI um, and AOI. Um, which is broken into uh, a few different parts and the contents of this presentation are why do we need x-ray inspection um, these are the three main reasons for x-ray inspection in the electronics industry um, this is this part really is for people that are not that familiar with um, x-ray technology and why we use it in the electronics industry um, what can we achieve with automated x-ray inspection or AXI um, scope of application of the X-Ray Opticon um, X-Line 3D, which is our own uh, flagship machine, which we're, we're very proud of. Opportunities and the limits of fault detection, um, fault scenarios for SOIC, QFN, THT, BGA, and then the conclusion of the presentation and the webinar summary. Um, so first of all, how does X-rays work? Well, we start off, um, with x-rays we have an x-ray tube or source as some people call it this em emits um, x-ray radiation uh, in, the, in the way of a, a beam then we have a test object um, and our, in our case it's going to be a, a PCB or um, an electronic assembly and then we have a detector that detects the x-ray radiation and converts that into a usable image or a visible image um, the weakening of x-ray radiation that depends on the difference in material, the difference in the material's density, and the difference in the thickness. Um, and it produces, uh, and it produces a grayscale um, image from the detector. Here we hit. It, on slide four, we have uh, a, a comparison image. We have an AOI image, a uh, top-down image on the left, uh, and a co corresponding X-ray image on the right. Um, the AOI image on the left um, doesn't look too bad. Uh, the legs look too look pretty good. Um, looks like something funny going on down the bottom here. Um, if you look on the X-ray image or the corresponding corresponding X-ray image, you can see there's quite a difference down on the, the bottom left side of the row of pins um, and also there's a short on the left hand side of the same device. What we can see here is the PCB itself which is barely visible on the x-ray image, the IC pin itself which is yeah it's visible and we have the, the QFP plastic body 
and again it's low density especially if it's plastic it's again it's not visible um, and then you have the complete solder joint and on the AOI image using a top-down camera um, it's impossible to see the full solder joint because obviously it's covered by the, the, the device leg. Uh, on the x-ray image you can see the entire solder joint. Uh, and what we have here on slide 5 we have another image and another way of interpreting x-ray images uh, is the top of view system and what we have here this is a, a 3D representation of the layers from the PCB up so you can see uh, where the device barely visible you can see the chip and you can see um, the internal leads of the device inside the, the, the plastic body of the device and you can see the solder pins and if you look at the solder pins themselves you can see the various faults which correspond to the faults on the uh, pure AXI image which is um, in the top left of the screen. And here we see, oh, and here we see uh, a short, as, as it's been identified, uh, an insufficient solder on one pin as well. So, though, okay, Dan, big deal. So, why do we need x ray inspection? We understand how it works. Why do we need it? Um, okay, so if you look, took a, a, a snapshot of a, a typical assembly like we have here, uh, we have a, a mid we have some SOICs, we have some large um, diode type devices or transistors, we have uh, some SOIs and we also have some, some BGA type devices um, and only with x-ray can we see the hidden leads and the hidden BGA balls um, and really only with x-ray can we thoroughly inspect those. Also here we have, again, we have some QFP type devices, uh, some SOI devices, and we also have a shield. This could be an RF shield or a grounding plane, and we have some devices underneath that. We have no idea um, what's underneath there. If you had a, an optical inspection system, if that shield was in place, there's no way that you could inspect that device in any way, shape, or form. Again only with an x-ray image could you could you penetrate through that RF shield and see the device itself. So we can we can detect the full solder joint and on this QFP type device here we have a row of pins along the top and if we zoom in along the top there um, you can see something's not quite right with that image there, but again, very difficult to detect with a top-down camera only on an AOI system. If you had an angle view system, again, yes, as long as you've got um, a very accurate angle view system, you can you can pick up leaded, uh, lifted leads on devices. But with today's assemblies becoming ever ever more uh, packed and obstruction of other devices in front of leaded devices. Um, it, it is becoming harder and harder um, that I find in the marketplace, even with an angle view camera, um, unless you've got a, a, an angle view camera that, that can step around um, in, in small increments or you have multiple angle view cameras um, picking up lifted leads on devices can be a particular problem. On the x-ray image, however, if you look at the x-ray image, you can see quite clearly there is there's quite a difference in the row of solder joint on the top there. Here we have another device and here we can see the, the x-ray image and we can see the rear meniscus or the heel as I like to call it, real technical term that, um, the heel of the solder joint which is which is quite dense and, and stands out quite a lot and you can see here on the top of your image, this is the heel here as well. And then that front row there, if you look at the front row, you can see a lot of pins which um, seem to be uh, 
harmonious or, or all one color all the way across. If they're all if they're if they're like that, then the interpretation is is that then they're they're lifted leads, they're not actually soldered to anything. And again, with the top of view image you see at the front here, you can't see any heel definitions at all. So we can answer the question, why do we need X-ray? Quite simply, X-ray ensures uh, an IPC compliant inspection. It's, it's, it really is as simple as that. So what do we achieve by automated X-ray inspection or AXI? So I'll give an example for our own um, X-Line 3D system. And we use, if you remember that early slide which showed, showed that you have a source and a beam, a detector, we have a, a, a maintenance-free microfocus X-ray tube which emits a um, high-intensity beam through the PCB or a PCB assembly um, which is then picked up by a detector um, which is a continuously scanning acquisition type device. So what do we achieve by automated inspection? Um, I'll carry on with that. Um, we, lead, we need to achieve at least nine different angled images of the same assembly or the same part or the same point. Um, we need those to reconstruct the differing sides of the board and the various layers through the board itself. And I'll come to that in a bit. So here we have a, a, an image um, actually taking place and you can see that we have nine images and if we combine them all together you'll find that there is a BGA type device on one side of the board and on the other side there's five capacitors. So we are looking at both sides of the board at the same time and I know where you're going, yes you can do double sided inspection in one pass. This one here is a picture of a through-hole type device and hopefully you'll see that scanning through the layers and there you can see it going through the layers and you can see that there are some components on one side of the board that go right through. Oops, that's not my lunch, that's just trying to explain how we do this layering feature. So what we do is we take the complete PCB with the um, assemblies and the components on both sides and basically we do it, we're doing horizontal slices through anything that we want to look at. So if we want to look at a BGA, we can look right through the BGA, right through the solder balls, right down to the PCB level. If you want to, if there's a device on the other side, you can go right through the PCB and look at the device on the underside of the board at the same time. So what we do is we take all of these images and we reconstruct the whole PCB. So we reconstruct the whole PCB on the top side and also on, on the bottom side for the inspection purpose. And we can take a, an area like we have defined here. We can zoom in. So we're looking at a BGA and we can take an area on the corner of the BGA and zoom in and there we can see the solder balls there. And we can see the solder balls, we can also see for the voiding, the shape, minimum dimensions of the of, of diameter of the ball and maximum diameter of the, of the solder ball. It's also very, very useful for, for other devices, for example, uh, we'll take this um, type device here. We have a large heat sink here, which is one thing if it's a heat sink, if it's a, a, an actual ground plane or if there is power going through this, it's, a, it's, it's also quite a critical solder component. And again, with the amount of avoiding that you can get on these type of devices, um, you, you do start to get a bit concerned about um, thermal heating up and, and hot spots on that device itself. cycle time. Yeah, great. So how long does it take? Okay, so a, a conventional AXI system uses a stop and go image acquisition 
um, process. So the, the way that it works is normally the PCB or, or the, uh, the source will move to a given position, it will stop, it will wait because it's a mechanical movement and you have to wait for everything to stop so it can take a sharp image, then it takes an image, then it moves, stops, waits, takes an image, moves, stops and repeats the process. So the sort of speed that you get uh, on, a, on a conventional type of AXI system um, can be quite limiting, particularly if it's in line on the end of a, of a production line. The Gopal uh, X-Line 3D uses a dynamic scan, so it's, it's obtaining its images dynamically as it is scanning over the board. This drastically cuts down um, process time and inspection time, um, and it's over three times faster than the stop and go acquisition type. So we believe that this machine is definitely ready for inline use. And when I say ready for inline use, there, there are some examples here. Typical examples, um, we have a, a 216 mil by 164 mil double-sided assembled PCB. It has 2,032 components, uh, 12,000, uh, sorry, 12, 12 BGAs, 60 SOs, 1,640 chips and 16 QFNs, 7,436 solder joints. Uh, we use our Opticon X-Line and we um, scan the PCB at 11 microns for um, AXI purposes and we did a 100% inspection in 55 seconds. Not bad, huh? Uh, application 2, uh, we have a, a PCB which is 160 mil by 100 mil, double sided, 509 components, uh, has 6 BGAs, 20 SOs, 424 chips, um, and 12 through-hole devices. Solder joints was 2,977. Again, um, use obviously use our system. Um, resolution set was a, which is a standard, which is um, 11 UM. 100% uh, inspection time was 43 seconds. Sample number three. This is a panelized board, 290 mil by 140, single-sided, 20 panels. Um, 1,340 components, 20 BGAs, 980 chips, 60 QFNs, 5,480 uh, solder joints, again stand, uh, scanned at a standard resolution of 11 microns, and the inspection time was 41 seconds. And lastly, another application example, we've got a large PCB, 400mm by 230, double sided assembled, 3,350 components, 22 BGAs, 59 SOs, 3,100 chips, 11,730 solder joints, um, and again at 11 UM. And inspection time, 100% uh, inspection was 80 seconds. So what are opportunities and limits of fault detection? Um, so let's have a look at the let's have a look at the plus side first. We'll have a look at the opportunities. So here we have a, a gull wing solder joint on an SO device, and you can see from the angle view picture here, you can see that it's lifted. Again, typically with a with a standard top-down AOI um, camera on its own, the, these are notoriously difficult to, to spot. And even more so if the device is is even smaller, if we have 0402 type resistor networks and that sort of thing, they can be very difficult. Um, with the corresponding um, AXI image, you can see the lifted leads a lot more clearly. And again, with the top of view here, you can see the bottom row don't look anything like the row at the back. So a gold wing solder joint. Here we have uh, uh, how we create an algorithm of um, a going solder joint. So let's have a look at processing this. If we invert the gray values, we end up with a profile here. And we can see the change in the, in the different parts um, of the grayscale image. And you can see quite clearly that there is a heel 
there is a, a, a very low point where the toe of the lead is, is touching the board or very nearly touching the board and then we have a slight raised bit where we have the toe or the front meniscus of the solder joint. If you took um, a lifted lead for example and did the same process you can see that this would be a failure straight away and you could see that this profile doesn't match at all, doesn't correspond with anything that has no real form or shape. QFN solder joints as well. Another thing with QFNs is very important is the large heat plane in the center of the device, but we're, I'll get to that again in a minute. Again, with the top of view image, you can see the voiding on the heat sink itself, on the heat plane. Uh, and from this information, again, an operator can decide. I mean, the machine would fail it if it was told to, um, if it was set to, um, and an operator would then have to make the decision whether that was a failed device and required rework or not. So a QFN solder joint. So a QFN solder joint has a significant front meniscus and it has a significant rear meniscus. And that's a, a corresponding top of view image and underneath is, is the corresponding um, AXI image taken from the machine. and the corresponding profile from that. Heat sinks, how do we define heat sinks? So first thing we need to do is we need to define the outer edges, the fixed threshold or a dynamic threshold, if it's, it's a heat sink that's on a very large padded plane, which means it may drift and move around a bit. The other thing is that we now have to do is, is to do a detection on the voids. And that, again, is a, is, can be a fixed threshold or it can be a dynamic threshold depending on the size of the heat plane. The other thing as well is that we've, we've had recently is, is we've had someone say to us, yeah, but we've got three wires underneath there. Um, in the latest version of software, we can now exclude those wires. We just draw around them and say exclude this area because it's a wire. We know it's always going to have a hole through the board. This is a, an image of... Um, the repair station and here we have um, an example of a, of a PCB or an assembly on the board with a crosshair with a, with a device that's failed, why it's failed um, and on the second monitor you will have an image straight from um, the AXI x-ray so you can see and there is a slider on the left hand side which you can't quite see but if you move the slider up and down you can go up and down through the levels of the PCB and then the levels of the component and next to that you have um, the top of view image of the SOIC device which you can zoom in and zoom out and rotate through all the degrees um, to aid you as much as possible. Um, also there is a, a classification keyboard um, next to the standard PC keyboard. This is used to identify or to clarify any failures that are ambiguous. So is it actually a short? No, it's okay. Um, is it an insufficient solder, yes it is insufficient, we'll have to rework it, or no it's not an insufficient solder, it's a false call, it will be okay. One thing we hadn't um, approached or, or spoke about at all were um, through hole components and, and through hole solder joints. So uh, evaluating the wetting which is a, an IPC standard um, and we can see here we have an assembly and the tin hole fill. So what we can do um, slicing or the layer technology which we use in the AXI to do exactly that through the PCB itself rather than looking at the at the surface of the PCB and, and further outwards, we can actually look through the PCB layers themselves. So for example, <clears throat> if I take a, a standard assembly, we have a, a, a connector down in the bottom right. It looks like a digital connector, the sort of thing that's, that's a through-hole connector. Um, 
So how could we test for this? Well, we could do a functional test. Um, do all the pins buzz out? Yeah, okay, that's all right. Um, we can do, if we do an AOI, so if we do a top-down AOI image, um, uh, is it there? Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it looks okay. Um, we could do um, an AOI image from underneath, and is it soldered? Well, yeah, okay, it, um, it looks soldered to me. We could do a standard conventional um, AXI or a 2D image or a manual 2D image and say, yep, uh, all of the all of the uh, barrels look black to me, so they look like they've got solder in them. But it's only when you use a 3D system with this layering technology can you truly see the layers and going through. And as we go through the layers, you can see here that there are three, four, five, six, seven pins which are looking not very well. Um, and you can see that they're quite starved of solder towards the top end. And if we do a, 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 a visualization, if you like, of that, again, you can see if we draw a level along at 75%, you can see where these seven pins have, have, have lost their solder. Um, and in which case, there wouldn't be enough solder actually on that device. Then we have BGA, and what a great opportunity for, for looking at these joints because these are virtually impossible to see properly. Um, BGA solder joints, we can take a QFP type device, which we have here left as an AOI image, and we have the, a corresponding image on the right hand side, which is the X-ray image. And you'll notice that there's quite a lot of voids on these, on these pins. How do we detect and what, what, are, we, what are we doing with, with um, solder balls uh, or BGA balls. What we want to do really is we want to detect the ball itself and then we measure the, measure the actual, actual solder ball diameter, um, the ball area, the compactness, the axis ratio, the mean gray value of the ball itself and the mean gray value of the background. And the reason we do that is because we want the highest contrast between the background and the solder ball itself. If we're losing voids, we, we detect the, the size of the void in relation to the area of the solder ball itself and then also we are looking to where that solder that that void is and how close that void is to the to the outer surface of the BGA ball measurement values of the void area and percentual void area regarding the ball area there are some other um, type solder balls uh, as and solder, solder floors. Um, for example, uh, head in pillow. It's a bit more obscure this one, um, but it still occurs. Uh, head in pillow. <laughs> there's a nice picture of a head in a pillow. Um, head in pillows uh, are, are typically where there is a, a, a either a pad fault or a solder fault, where um, the solder ball itself doesn't form correctly. And you can see the contrast between the two there. And again you can see uh, like a, a slice through diagram here of what's happened. So you may even have a fracture or a non-joining solder ball right through, which again may pass a functional test and may work for so long until it goes out in the field and then fails. When we come down to the, the AXI sample or example here we have a, a, an example of a, of a heading pillow looking with an x-ray and you can see that the the, the, the well soldered uh, BGA ball is a, is a nice round dark sphere whereas the heading pillow has a lighter gray area around the outside and again when we're doing the definition for the algorithm you can see the well soldered BGA ball here and examples of heading pillows here where you can see the shapes are all over the place um, and the significant differences are the axis ratio, the compactness and the area. So that's all the uh, advantages. Now let's, let's talk about some of the weaknesses. So what can't I do with my super duper AXI system? Well, um, I can't look for fiducials. I can't do OCR. I can't do OCR and I can't tell you that um, that's the right device or the right version of the device or it's got the right software on it installed. 
and I can't check for polarity if a, if a certain device is the right way around. And also, I can't check color codes on resistors. So there are limitations to, to X-ray. One thing that um, we've done to, to sort that out is we've put an AOI module into the AXI and we have a combined machine. So the fact that I now have a top-down camera in using visible light, we can now use um, the AOI system to check for your fiducials and we can read the text on the top of um, ICs and make sure it's the correct one and we can check the polarity is around the right way and we can read the color codes on through hole resistors and make sure they're right. So to, to wrap all of this up, in conclusion, why do we need x-ray for inspection? We need to test hidden solder joints through uh, BGAs, component uh, types, and, and through shields. Uh, these devices are only possible with an x-ray system. Um, we need to be able to do a real test of the rear solder meniscus on, on IC pins. Um, this is absolutely critical, um, especially on fine pitch devices. Um, we need to do a real test of the tin hole fill um, or through hole components um, so we can see that the barrel fill is um, above IPC compliance. Um, evaluation of characteristics defined by IPC, um, independent of reflections and shadows. So x rays are not um, affected by reflections and shadows. Um, and the safe detection of critical solder faults, lifted leads, um, large voids under heat shields, um, thermal pads and, and high voltage pads and that sort of thing. All of these um, can be checked uh, specifically with um, an x-ray system. And what technology is necessary to do that? Well, 3D x-ray is necessary because we need to separate the top side from the bottom side. Um, and only with this, this layering um, technology can we do that. Um, the other thing that we need to do is we need to have the shortest cycle time possible if the machine is in line because we, we don't want the inspection to, to cause a bottleneck on the production line, um, which is why again um, Gopal developed this scan image acquisition to have a very fast um, process time and very fast um, inspection time. So finally, if, if there's anything that I would want to summarize for that, I would say that an inline X-ray or an AXI system is an, is an investment in the future um, as devices become t more tighter and tighter packed, as um, more and more fine pitch devices are, are placed on, on boards. Um, you can only do the real inspection of the full solder joint with, with an X-ray system. Um, and I, I personally feel that it is definitely uh, an investment in the future. And I would like to thank you all very, very much for your attention and your patience with me bumbling through this presentation for you. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, it wasn't a bumble at all. It was very, very good and, um, and, and interesting all the way through.